Hi, I'm Catherine Wong, and I'm your Child Science 9 teacher for this year. The best way to contact me if you need anything is through Catherine.wong at epsd.ca, and clearly I'm a teacher at Vernon Bartford. So a little bit about me, I actually went to Harry Ainley, so I grew up really close to the area. Um, I didn't go to Vernon Bartford, but I went to a junior high nearby. And then I went on to go to the University of Alberta. So at Harry and Lee, I did the full IB program. Uh, and then I decided to go into a Bachelor of Science program with a specialization in biochemistry. So I was a huge science nerd. Um, I did a lot of my studies on things like DNA and proteins and so on. And then when I finished, I was not sure exactly where I wanted to go with uh, my career. And I thought about volunteer opportunities um, like coaching swimming um, and martial arts and working with adults to teach ESL. And I decided to try education. And so nervously I went in and I did an after degree so that two-year program to get your Bachelor of Education. Luckily, when I got my first student teaching practicum, I loved it and I really enjoyed teaching. And so it was a good fit. One of my student teaching, uh, Practicums was actually at Vernon Barford. So about a decade ago, I was actually Mrs. May's student teacher. Um, so if your child ever had Mrs. May, yeah, I was her student teacher a long time ago. Um, I was also a teacher at Center High campus before I came to Vernon Barford. And so Center High is one of Edmonton Public's high schools. And so I've taught all the science courses for high school as well as a bit of chemistry, um, some math courses and some ESL math and science courses as well. So I've taught every single science course in junior high and high school. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of know where your students are coming from and going as well. Uh, classroom expectations, essentially, just for your child to be in class every day on time and excited to learn, be respectful to everyone. Some tips for success in science is really to participate. Um, the more active they are, the better they're just going to remember everything instead of just sitting and waiting um, for things to be inserted into their brain. Um, always wondering, since it's science, really questions are the best way to learn um, versus like knowing all the answers. So just uh, being willing to take risks and try things. Um, reviewing, I find even in grade nine, a lot of students struggle with study habits. Um, so a lot of students will just kind of reread their notes in order to study. Uh, which is often not the most efficient way of studying. So just uh, getting more active in terms of their study habits. One way of doing this is just to make their own summary. Um, another one is really to self quiz, right? And so uh, we're gonna be going over a couple of ways to study and improve as we go through the year as well. Topics that we're gonna cover, this is a little bit scrambled, but we are actually going to be starting with space exploration. And so this one's a really fun unit, actually. It's a study into our solar system, our universe, and travel within space. So right now, students have started their research project in ancient civilizations and presented on it, um, how different civilizations viewed the stars and the universe, and how it helped guide them with things like navigation, agriculture, farm, um, and just tracking seasons for animal migrations, for hunting, and things like that as well. Um, we're going to be going a lot further into specifics of how our universe is arranged, um, doing some calculations with light years, uh, and then taking a look at a lot of technology as well. So um, how do we learn about space and what does that information teach us about the world? And then we're going to be going into a couple other units. Um, our biology unit is biological diversity. And so we're going to be getting into a lot about adaptations for organisms. Um, it continues a lot of what they started in grade seven with symbiosis um, and um, how organisms are related to each other. And then we're going to get into reproduction, which is always fun, and then getting into genetics, which is tied. So we're going to be getting a lot more into DNA. Uh, electrical principles and technologies is our physics unit. It's really fun. Um, we're going to be building quite a few circuits. There's a lot of hands-on sections in electrical principles and technologies, as well as calculations. Um, so we're going to be taking a look at how they calculate energy and things like that, and then how to uh, learn about generators and motors. Um, one of my favorite units in grade nine is a matter and chemical change unit. And so this is when students get into the periodic table. 
No, they will never have to memorize a periodic table. Even if they take chemistry 30, they'll always have access to a periodic table. And so it's really knowing how to use a periodic table and um, reading the information from it, answering questions based on it. And then, um, how, so in grade nine, students will be starting to learn about the difference between elements and compounds, um, starting naming processes. So if I tell them sodium chloride, they'll be able to look in the periodic table and build the formula for NaCl, um, and then getting into different reaction types. And then lastly, environmental chemistry um, is still a chemistry unit, uh, but it gets into more acids and bases, um, taking a look at how chemicals affect the environment. So things like fertilizers, um, food sciences, acid rain, um, and so on and so on. Our assessment scale is a four point scale. So instead of percentages, um, students will get one of these numbers. So a four means a high A, three and a half means a low A, um, and then et cetera, et cetera. What we look at is their work on tests, on projects, um, and even things like quizzes in class, their participation, um, their comments, uh, how they work with others. All of that is used as information for where the student is. Um, and so it's a, it's a look at their growth throughout the year. And so, yeah. One thing is our LEAP schedule. So LEAP will be for science on Wednesday from 3 to 3.30. It's going to start next week. And then if students are asked to stay for LEAP, they're expected to let their parents know and attend. Uh, their LEAP teacher might be their classroom teacher, or it might be another science teacher that teaches that grade. Um, for example, myself, I teach Science 8 and Science 9. And so some weeks I'll be running Science 8 sessions, some weeks Science 9. Um, but if they need help with Science 9, um, we will send them to a classroom that is running a Science 9 session. Um, so yeah, often we're doing things like exam preps, um, or if we're catching up on projects, or if students just need to fill in a gap, maybe they didn't do so well on a formative quiz, and we want to make sure they learn it before their test comes up. So that might be reasons why your child is asked to stay for LEAP. Um, it's part of their regular school day, so they are expected to attend if asked. And then in terms of their classroom, for navigating their classroom, um, there is some information posted in classwork. Classroom is always easier to use from a student account. So if you're trying to get information, um, I would encourage you to just sign in with your child instead of looking at the parent version. Um, the parent summary is not always the most useful. Um, things that they'll need is the VB Science website. So the VB Science website has all of their resources. So if I click on Science 9, you'll see there's a course outline. And then if I come down, there's all your textbook files. So this is a really good place for resources. If I hover, you can go directly into a unit. So for example, we're on space right now. And you can see here, these are the notes, right? So if they are missing anything from class, uh, they can click through and find any missing information. The other really important thing is the grade nine class calendar. So if I click through to the grade nine class calendar, it tells you when to bring Chromebooks for classes, um, when quizzes are, uh, days off for classes, um, as well as upcoming exams, right? So our first exam right now is scheduled for October 7th. Um, and so I would encourage students to use this as part of their organizational skills, keeping track of their calendar. Um, yeah. And then I'll often post notes and information, um, any assignments that students have on hand as well. Um, so once again, our classroom is pretty important. And so students are encouraged to keep an eye on your calendar in your classroom as well. Other than that, I think that's about it for Science 9. If you have any questions, once again, the best way to contact me is through email at katherine.wong at epsb.ca. Otherwise, I look forward to a year with your child. Um, getting to know them so far. They've been really great to have in class. And so I wish you all the best and have a great night.